Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm John, and today we're going to be talking about the 1986 anti-war film, Platoon. We're also going to be talking about its brand new Shout Select 4K Blu-ray that was just released. But before we dive into all that, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, film reviews, tech reviews, game reviews, we try and do them all here on the channel. And nothing would help us out more than by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. The Platoon was released in 1986, directed by Oliver Stone, starring Tom Barringer, Willem Dafoe, Charlie Sheen, with some supporting roles from Forrest Whitaker, Tony Todd, Keith David, and even a very small role by Johnny Depp. So this cast was stacked for 1986, and not only that, this film also won the Best Picture, won Oliver Stone Best Director, got Academy Award nominations for Willem Dafoe and Tom Barringer. So in 1986, this film was a monster. It was a huge success. This was actually an indie film at the time where Oliver Stone had a hard time raising money to film this film. This is a film that meant the world to Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone was an infantryman in the Vietnam War, so he wanted to make a film that depicted what it was like to be that in the Vietnam War and show the humanity or the lack thereof of humanity that is involved in the Vietnam War, show people what they actually weren't seeing. Now this isn't the first film to do this, obviously the most famous probably being Apocalypse Now that came out in the late 70s directed by Francis Ford Coppola and what's really cool about that is Apocalypse Now stars Martin Sheen and this film stars Charlie Sheen and both of them are actually doing narration in both films, very similar narration I might add. So I don't know if Oliver Stone was a fan of Apocalypse Now and he wanted to actually thought, okay, Charlie Sheen does sound similar to Martin Sheen and it would be good to get some narration and get into his mind just like we got into Martin Sheen's mind in Apocalypse Now. So it kind of felt very similar to me in that vein. This isn't my first time seeing Platoon, but I was never the biggest Platoon fan. I actually, as far as Oliver Stone movies go, I believe my favorite one is JFK. I've seen JFK a ton of times. I saw it at a way too young age, too. I remember I was watching this when I was like 13 and not really understanding the ramifications of the film and everything that they were trying to depict about the JFK assassination and, and conspiracy. I just really enjoyed the acting of, the mil of that film. I really enjoyed Kevin Costner in that movie. I thought he did a great job. I just really enjoyed that film. I go back to JFK all the time, and that's a really long movie. This film is up there for me as far as Oliver Stone films. You know, he's directed some other classics too. It's really hard. This guy has won Best Director twice. He won again for the Born on the Fourth of July, which I believe was the next film he did after this, because he did make a Vietnam trilogy of films, and he he made so many classics. He made Natural Born Killers. Most people's favorite is probably Wall Street, which I, I like Wall Street too. I think Michael Douglas steals the show at that. Charlie Sheen's a little bit miscast, but Oliver Stone is a fantastic director. And although it's been rumored that he's pretty hard to work with, he definitely knows what he's doing. And this film is no different. This is a very hard film to watch, I would say, but it is something that I think needs to be seen if you're trying to understand what war is like. And this is a very much an anti-war film. It's trying to show you that war is meaningless. It's following around this platoon of soldiers and it's showing the rivalry between Tom Barringer and Willem Dafoe's character and basically just trying to show what the humanity is in each of them. And then the rest of the soldiers that fall underneath them, they have to really just pick a side. And that's really just the basic story of this movie because this movie is really just showing what the day-to-day -day lives are of this platoon and what they have to deal with on it each day and just trying to get by. Because Charlie Sheen's character, he volunteered for this. He felt like he wanted to do his part, but he even says in a letter to his grandmother a week in that this is nothing like he was expecting. I think that's what Oliver Stone is trying to tell us is that we, for the most part, we see all the glamour and all the rewards of war and like what it could bring and having pride for your country and all that stuff. When really, war for the soldiers in the war or people living in these towns, especially in these Vietnamese towns, what they had to go through and what the soldiers were forced to do or what they felt like they were forced to do for their country and just basically taking the humanity out of these men and what they had to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Like you might go in there one way and you're not coming out the same way. This is something that we've seen depicted in film many times but it really is hard to see in this film because of just the things that these soldiers had to do. The big one being when they actually have to go into a town and then they end up killing a lot, killing everyone in the town and burning the town down and just ruining their lives for what they think is for the greater good. Even though Willem Dafoe knows that this is the wrong thing to do, these soldiers have to follow the chain of command and they're forced to do things that even if they never wanted to do it, they have to do it. And it is very hard to watch. Now one of the most famous images from this, which is depicted on many of the posters, not on this particular poster, but on many posters is Willem Dafoe being shot down and then him having his arms waved in the air like this. It's one of the most famous images in film and that 
that is such a powerful scene. The score swirling in on that, it is amazing. And there is no reason to think that that scene is any less than what is depicted over 35 years ago. It's still powerful now. That scene was awesome. I really did. I was like, okay, it's getting a little bit ridiculous because they shot him, I think, like 15 times and he's not going down. But it really just showed the will of this man to live. And to really, because, you know, he got shot by his own brother in his mind. Even if him and Tom Barringer don't get along, for him to get shot by him and then to still escape and almost tell people, like, what this man did to him. It's just, it's hard. It's hard because, like, Tom Barringer does seem like the villain. But what led him to be that, and what that's what Oliver Stone's trying to tell you, is that this war basically took the humanity out of this man. And it is just such a good film for that. Um, is it my favorite? No. I think they did a great job. I think that the pacing of this movie can be a little bit slow at times. They definitely drag on a lot of shots. I mean, I get the pull point is to show what these guys have to go through on their day-to-day -day lives, but there is a lot of time where they're just walking and we're just really looking at the jungle. And the jungle is beautiful, but I would have liked a little bit more... I thought it kind of would drag the pacing down of the film a little bit more. Now, this did win Best Picture of 1986. Is it my favorite film of 86? No, it's not. But it is definitely a good film. And it's a lot of people's favorite films from Oliver Stone. And it's a lot of people's favorite films of all time. And I can see why. It's a very entertaining film at points. And it really is something that gets under your skin and is going to make you think after the film is over. So I understand why Academy, of Vo Academy Award voters in 1986 would pick this film as their favorite film of 1986. If I was voting, no, I wouldn't have. But it's still a good film. And just to note one thing, John C. McKinley, who is one of my favorites, he, he plays Dr. Cox on Scrubs, and he's, I just love the guy, he seems like such a great guy. He is totally out of place in this movie. That accent that he whips out, every time he comes on scene and starts talking like that, I'm just like, nobody just told him to use his regular voice, why is he using this over-the-top ridiculous accent and chewing gum the whole time? It doesn't make sense to me. It really bothered me every time he on screen. I assume it's because of how his face looks, because if he didn't speak, he really sold the actual facial expressions of what he's going through, but the actual acting as far as speaking and delivering dialogue goes, I thought he did a really bad job. And I'm sorry to say that because, again, I love John C. McGinley. And my wife and me were watching this together. She's like, oh, look, there he is, Dr. Cox. I was like, yeah, I love John C. McGinley. And then he talked, and I was like, what is he doing? Like, what is going on? Why did Oliver Stone just pull this on and go, just use your regular voice. We don't need this accent. It's not working. It just... I don't know, that was just, that was the one outlier in this film as far as the actors go, because everyone did a great job acting. Even Charlie Sheen, not the greatest of actors in my opinion, he did a pretty good job in this movie. I think he was a little more reeled in by Oliver Stone because he did this and then Wall Street and, you know, that all really does work. But overall, I think that this is a pretty good film and I think I can definitely recommend it if you haven't seen Platoon. If you have seen Platoon, I'm just really repeating all the things you've already heard. This is a good film, you're going to want to see it. You're definitely going to want to check this one out. But we're also here today to talk about its new 4K Blu-ray release from Shout Select. On September 13, 2022, Shout Factory through their Shout Select brand has released Platoon on 4K Blu-ray. Now this isn't Shout's first dive into Platoon. Actually, this is the scan they did in 2018 for their release that Oliver Stone actually gave the stamp of approval to. This is just that scan with HDR and Dolby Vision on it. Now if you go on Blu-ray.com, it's going to tell you that this only has HDR on it and it doesn't tell you what the audio is. It does have Dolby Vision. I double checked that. And the Dolby Vision actually does some pretty good work in this. I think the Adobe Vision is actually way better than the HDR10 that's on here because I tested them both out. The Adobe Vision definitely makes the resolution and the colors really pop on here. The resolution was very clear. And I was at one point, I got up and I went and looked. And I was like, okay, this is very minimal film grain on certain scenes, mainly in the day scenes when they're outside the jungle. And it was very noticeable in the beginning of the film when they first are showing the jungle and, they, and their camo really matches up to the leaves of the green. That was beautiful. I thought, okay, wow, we're in for a real treat with this transfer and for the most part it is a good transfer there are certain scenes where the Dolby Vision and the HDR kind of I think made the film grain look a little bit bad there's one scene in particular that sticks out in my mind where Willem Dafoe and Charlie Sheen are in the dark and they're talking and at one point it kind of looks like like one big wind of snow flew over it because the film grain just kind of blew in real quick and then it kind of calm down but it was really only in the dark dark scenes that that was kind of an issue and I thought the Dolby Vision would actually fix that so it seemed like it was kind of working in certain spots really well and in other spots it was working not the greatest in my opinion 
the daytime scenes, which most of this movie takes place in the daytime, or at least very well lit scenes, that that really isn't an issue and it really does make everything pop and look beautiful. Almost too realistic. There was a point, because this film is filmed in the Philippines, where I was like, it looks like they're on sound stages. That's how good it looked, because it just was so clear. It felt like you were there, which I think might actually take a little bit away from this film. I've only seen this film on VHS, DVD, and on streaming services, so I've always kind of seen this film where it kind of looks a little dated and old because it's a 1986 film, whereas now it is Dolby Vision at points, this looks like you're in the Vietnam jungle, which is awesome. I, I was like, okay, wow, they did some really good work, but I do think it takes a little bit away from the film itself because when you're watching a movie, you want to kind of, you know, take yourself out, get wrapped up in the film. You don't want to feel like you're there, but on the other hand, it is extremely clear. Uh, most people, I'm sure, are going to love this, that you get to see how clear and beautiful the resolution is on this and how the Dolby Vision makes the colors pop because it is a very beautiful looking movie in general. It shot very well, um, and, and which is, again, it's crazy because they had a hard time raising money for this film, so the fact that this actual film negative is this clear and Oliver Stone was able to give the stamp of approval for it, I'm sure he was blown away by how his film looks now, and I would be too because I thought, the, like I said, I thought the HDR and the, mainly the Dolby Vision, because like I said, I ran them both. I think the Dolby Vision does do better work than the HDR. I still think it looked great. It was a, definitely a big upgrade as far as visuals go. Definitely a big upgrade, I'm sure, because I'm sure the Blu-ray disc that comes in here, I ran them both back-to-back -back on my OLED TV, and the 4K was a big upgrade from that. Just because of Dolby Vision and HDR, it's actually unbelievable what that does. And the little uptick in resolution helps that so much. If you already have that 2018 Blu-ray, it's going to be hard for me to say the visual upgrade is worth purchasing because the audio track on here is exactly the same on that disc as it was now. And actually, there's something on here at the 39 minute mark as far as audio goes that I'm really surprised they didn't clean up. It just sounds like they put a denoise over the one actor who's delivering his lines because it sounds very distorted. And what I think happened is in when they were editing this, or I, I don't know if it's in the original cut, but I don't remember it being there because it sounded very distorted is they were just trying to like cancel some of the background noise and unfortunately it kind of screwed up the way his dialogue sounds and it's only for a few seconds but it's on the blu-ray and it's on the 4k so that bothered me just a little bit and the audio track for itself for a big war movie like this it's not the greatest as far as the 5.1 goes the dts master hd 5.1 this definitely would have benefited from an Dolby Atmos track and they got Dolby Vision so it's strange that they didn't get Dolby Atmos and we just got a 5.1 because this is a war film you're gonna want to hear those helicopter blades spinning around bullets flying behind you to the left of you to the right of you and it really didn't do that it had some really good parts actually some of the stuff that really did surprise me as far as the mix goes is a lot of the quiet scenes you would hear like them walking by the leaves and then their pants or their arms scraping by the leaves and that would come in through a different speaker and I thought okay they really paid attention to the little details there it's weird that they couldn't get the really loud war scenes to sound perfect so it's just really just juxtaposed as far as like that goes but it doesn't take away completely from the film. I just thought that the audio track definitely could and probably should eventually get another run through, another pass through, and maybe throw an Atmos track on it because it isn't the greatest. Now, as far as extras go, all your extras are going to be on your Blu-ray disc. And for me, these are some of my favorites. Now, these are, again, no new extras. These are the same extras you've gotten before. But the shining star for me is the audio commentary track by Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone is one of the most fascinating people and one of the most fascinating directors because he's just like a real rags to riches kind of guy. He fought in the Vietnam War. So just listening to him speak is very fascinating. He seems like a real down to earth kind of person. Is he a little bit crazy? Yeah, he's kind of a conspiracy theorist too, obviously if you've seen his films. But he is extremely intelligent and it's really fun to watch and listen to him speak, so I think his audio commentary track is definitely the one you're going to want to go with. There's another audio commentary track on here as well. There's also some featurettes and some lookbacks, which I'll, those are my personal favorites. Anytime you can get that on here, I would have liked a full-fledged documentary that's like two hours long, but I get that we don't get that because we do get a lot of lookbacks on the Vietnam War and Oliver Stone's thoughts and a lot of producers and the editor all talking about making the film and uh, Charlie Sheen giving his thoughts on it. So there is plenty of that on here. There's plenty of good extras. Again, nothing new, but still really good extras. Some that I can totally recommend that you check out if you haven't yet. Also, just to go over what the box art looks like, you know, the most famous image is obviously Willem Dafoe with his arms raised in the air. And I would have liked that on the cover, but this is pretty good too. I think it's a decent cover. 
And unlike Shout Factory Scream Factory release, this is not a reversible cover. This is it. This is what it's going to look like on your shelf. There's nothing too special. Like I like to bring up all the time, I do like the little disc design that Scream Factory, Shout Factory, or in this case, Shout Select, put that extra time in to make the disc look good. So when you open it up, it's not just a plain black or light blue disc. It's just something that they put a little extra detail in that I personally can appreciate. So overall, could I recommend this disc? It really depends on what you have. If you have the very old 2011 Blu-ray, 100%, no reason to not upgrade. If you have the um, if you have the 2018 Blu-ray that came out from Screen Factory, it's gonna be a little bit more of a tougher call. I think that's gonna come down to if you're a fan of the film or not. If, if you're a huge fan of the film and you wanna see it in its best way possible that's available to us now, then this Platoon 4K from Shout Select is the way to go. I can't think of a better way at this point. It's definitely not gonna look as good on streaming, and that Blu-ray, yeah, it's still pretty decent. I just ran it. It does look pretty good. It's definitely not as bad as it looked like on DVD and VHS, I could tell you that. But, you know, it's really going to come down to the fact that you're not getting new extras. The audio track I don't think is the greatest, but that visual uptick is definitely something you're going to want to see. War has never looked more beautiful than it does in Platoon, I can promise you that. And I think you're going to want to definitely check this one out if you are a huge fan of Platoon. But if you're not, you just like to collect Shout Select Blu-rays, or you just want to have every Shout Blu-ray there is, or you just are a huge collector, I could say probably wait for a sale. This definitely is something that I would operate in the $15 to $20 range. If you can get it at $15, bucks, I think it's totally worth that, and that's definitely where it's worth the upgrade. And if you're just a big fan of Platoon, you can go out and grab this now, and I'm pretty sure you're going to be satisfied. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us on another episode of Let's Talk. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and tell all your friends.